Hello, welcome back to Auto Pop Culture. Today we're going on the, over the LA-based singer called Ash and her debut album called Ashlyn. So I've been following her for a while. Um, I fell into her when she came out with a song in 2017 called um, Used To It. And I really, really loved it. I love her sound. I love the production. So it was really, really going well for me. And I loved her look too. So I was like, okay, this is somebody definitely rising. I need to watch her. So I did. I watched her and I felt like some songs were good. Or some songs were really, really good, and the ones that weren't, that I wasn't really into were more just like, eh, not really into it, but it wasn't like it was horrible move, so, or moves or songs. Like, they're, all the songs really do a good job. And then she kind of fell into doing some um, features with um, Party Pupils with Love Me on the weekend in 2018, and another one with Big uh, Gigantic with uh, Friends came out in 2019. And in the middle of those things, were, or after Friends, I feel like we've moved into more of her own stuff. And so start releasing kind of EPs with Moral of the Story Chapter 1. And then later in that same year of 2019, uh, Moral of the Story Chapter 2. And all of this stuff was happening because from what I understood, she was going through a divorce. And she married somebody pretty young. And then over time, just things weren't really adding up. And things were happening in the relationship that died out. So then she got a divorce and all of this now is just kind of just collecting as we find out but there's no album since we kept going and going and going and there's no album but finally I'll like singles for an album was starting to happen I was like okay now we're getting somewhere and now here's the album so I want to point out one thing that I definitely want to point out is I say this a lot but I have this this is a definite this album is literally the definition of what I was thinking about is when you say when I say like I feel like I don't really want to go into the singles sometimes because I feel like the singles don't really make any sense to me until you listen to the full album and once you get the album you're like oh this lines up with this lines up with that and now you get the now you get a full arcing like story arc of what this artist wants you to talk about and I feel like this album Ashlyn has completely did that. Like, it just completely did that. Um, this album talks about a lot of her, like, her relation, pretty much mostly talking about the lessons she's learned via her marriage and, or divo and divorce. And also what she's learned about love and what it means to be in love and what it means to be out of love and when, when to call it quits, when not to call it quits. And on top of that, also what she, who she is as a person. And on top of that, also talking about, um, during the time of this pro of writing process of this album, um, her, her dad, her dad, her brother passed away. And so there's like two songs, one mainly talking about it, but one kind of metaphorically talking about that and this art story arc of the album. So let's go into, let's go into it with my favorite songs first. And then I'll kind of give you the over arc of what I felt about it in general. Um, so first off, we go into, uh, we have a chunk of the album where it kind of, or not a chunk, but like three songs where it talks about more of how, uh, talks about actual, like a good relationship or good, sh or feeling, having kind of, yes, a good relationship where like the person is feeling very supported and very, um, and just really in love. So you have like till forever, so forever falls apart with Venice and you got that kind of what it talks about. Like if the world falls apart, I'm just glad I have time with you kind of thing. Um, and then, um, I'm fine kind of goes into place where she's like, she likes to pretend like she's fine and other people kind of just ignore it, but he sees right through it and that she really appreciates that. And then it goes into love is not enough where she talks about the willingness to commit to a love and pretty much saying just like how she, it seems like what it gets to me is that this kind of peels off from an aftermath of a divorce. So she has a lot of insecurities, a lot of stuff that she's had baggage from that, from that past relationship that's going seeking into this new one. And so she says, she's like, I know love, uh, love is not enough, but at least we got that much. Pretty much say, um, pretty much saying that she knows that there's more to it that needs to be given for this to work. But, and she knows that her own baggage she brought into it doesn't make it easier. Um, as this one says, you say you want a girl with a future, but everybody comes with a past. 
Um, I'm not, tr I'm just trying to fix it. I'm trying to show you the difference. Pretty much showing her that she's not just, she's not tangled, tied down by her past of what she, of what situations and her divorce that she was in. She's not defined by that and she's trying to show that to this person because this person's not really feeling that that's what's really happening. Um, but I love, it seems like it's, se but it seems like she's in the right place with this person so she wants to prove it. Um, going into more of a section where we talked about, we fall deeper into the actual relationship in the past. And so we got the gist of, of the present time, it seems like, and now we're not of talking about, oh, here's snippets of what's been going on. Okay, now let you, now let's do a, like a flashback of what it, of what actually happened. And so we go into it when I'm older, where she talks about how it's a little complicated, where she really still loves this person, but she hopes when she gets older, she'll find a way to get fall out of love with him or not care so much about wanting to be with him or being around him. Um, and then we go into one of my other, one of my really favorite, one of my favorite songs, um, Me Without You, which just talks about pretty much moving on after a relationship and pretty much talking about how she started to find how find out who she is and who she true or who she truly is. I love the production. I think it's really nice. I love the violins inside it. I think it's really nice in that. Um this one has a lot of pieces. Like one of the parts is like it seems like the her relationship that she was in, a lot of things revolved around the other person and not really much of her. So now that she's out, she she says like I can be funny. I can be interesting. People can like me. And it shouldn't be a threat. Uh, it shouldn't be threatening. Um, th th these things are the things I've uh, I've learned since I've been alone. Pretty much seeing that she is pretty much she can be her own person, and she's finding out how easy it is to be her own person. And so that's where you kind of see that kind of hope in that piece. Then we go further back into kind of thoughts about the relationship, where she talks about and save myself. Which pretty much has a, this is supposed to be a, res a spiteful response to the big so uh, song that we're going to get to eventually called Moral of the Story. And this one kind of just vents out all her, her, all her, um, just resentment and upsetness and everything that she felt ups upset and angry about inside the relationship. She kind of lets it all out. And pretty much saying that I, I, uh, one of the things I really like that was kind of clever wording is we're cocaine playing ha milk and honey. Pretty much saying like it's good, it's it's addicting, but it's bad for you. Where milk and honey is always like oh the land of milk and honey kind of thing. We're pretending like we're something amazing, but we're really just addiction, you know. Um, da -da 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 -da, lost my place. Um, and so there's a part where she talks about like if I had a chance, I would have jumped off the. Um, I would have jumped off the ship, or what she says, jumped off the sinking, yeah, the sinking ship instead of going down with it. And so she sees it in that direction, and that's really interesting. Then we go into Taylor, where it talks about kind of like the joys of being in love and how people say, like, how she kind of, it seems like she kind of wishes that they met later on in life, where things are much more, where they're much more in a mature direction, where they can be together. Um, as she says, uh, we couldn't, we couldn't meet when we're 33. It's hard to keep a love alive when you meet at 15. Um, and then having all these people, she says, I'm so in love and so in love with this guy. And she's like, and her, and her mom and her best friend's like, it's, you're just, it, you're just young. You're not really, this is not really love. You're just infatuated by this guy, you know? And so I think it's, and from all these pieces that we're seeing, it definitely is showing me that from what we got so far is that she, fell in love with this guy at a very young age, a teenager, and they stayed together until they got married, so probably high school sweethearts, and then now th things start tearing out because they weren't really working out their actual, as they mature, or as they get older, they start seeing that certain things that they're doing isn't really healthy for the relationship. Um, so that's what we get so far. Then it goes into Not Mad Anymore. These are all songs so far that I actually have starred next to it, because I really do like these songs. Um, so not mad anymore, kind of a love letter to Ash's like struggle with love and kind of understanding to herself, just like, this is just how it go. Like this, I cannot be mad anymore over, I'm not mad anymore over these things about how it fell apart. Um, she actually, she pretty much actually says like, it's the best, it's the best mistake I've made. 
and she's lear- it seems like she's learning from it, and she's like, I got the gist of what I want and what I don't want from these things. Um, do, 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 is one part I wanted to say. So she says, like, I'm not mad anymore about the madness. We didn't have the, any more of that magic. Pretty much saying, like, I should, I'm not mad anymore that shit, went, all the stuff that happened in the middle of it. The gist of it is that it all came down to the fact that the magic was gone, and we just didn't really want to uh, admit it. Um, always another one that kind of, would, that's the, when I looked it up, it made it seem like it was about the brother that died, but it, it kind of seems like it's metaphoric, because the other part of it talks about how, how she's pretty much saying that she loves this person always, no matter what, but she also is concerned that if she's, as she says, if staying with me isn't the best, what if staying with me isn't the best way to keep you happy? Um, and then she goes in, I don't care what people say, you know, I'm not, I won't. Uh, force you to say, don't want you to go, but I'll be okay, and I always, I'll love you always. Pretty much saying, like, she's letting it go, she's letting it be what it is, and then kind of move in, but knowing, saying that, you know, I'll always love you, even though this ends and everything. Really beautiful song. Then we finally go into Moral of the Story, which is a really, really good song, and this one was on, um, To All the Boys I Loved, part two, um, but this one's pretty much talking about the idea that Sometimes mistakes get made, and the moral story is that you just and that you should learn from it, you know. And the end of it, and the end, of, actually, the moral story is that in the end of it, it will make you feel it will. It's the it's better for you in the end. Like you'll know in the end that this because I went through this, I know I'll make it through because I learned so much from it. Um, Serial Monogamous is another one I really like. I love the production; it's really nice. It's pretty much talking about how she's leading back. She's taking a step back from falling into love with everybody, and she has a th- history of going from one long relationship to another long relationship to another long relationship, so she's learning to ch- kind of do a thing where she doesn't, she kind of removes the strings, so she's like, I want to come over, and we can mess around, or we can hang out, or we can do all these things, but in the end, there's no cuddle, like, we're not going to, I'm not going to hold you in the morning, kind of thing, and she's like, as she says, she's like, to take your clothes off, but by morning, I won't try to hold you. Um, promise I won't call you later, try to get to know you. So she doesn't want to get to know any, anything. It's just strings attached, kind of like sex kind of direction, it seems like. Um, because she's trying to learn to kind of be okay with being by herself and not jumping to a relation, relationship just because you have some type of feelings for somebody. Um, Ryan's song is the actual song that's about his, uh, about her brother. And it's so sad. It kind of talks of it. I feel like what she's, what she pulled out of it was that he might have committed suicide. Um, but from what I got, that it's just, it's so sad. It's so sad because she definitely, when it starts off with the, uh, I tried to call you and I called you, I went straight to voicemail, so I got kind of upset. So I, but I hit it, I hit it saying like, oh, I can call you back, blah, blah. And then literally gets a call, not long, not soon, soon later gets a call saying that he passed away. And it's just like, wow. And so all these things that she's like thinking about that she regrets and that she, wishes she got to know, that she was hoping that their their issues that they may have with each other, she kind of hopes they would be resolved by 40 so they can kind of live together, like, and live a happy life together. Um, but she still ends it with, like, I still love you, blah, 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 and it's like that. And then it ends with Ryan, with Ryan himself giving her encouragement about, like, you know, I've been through all this stuff and I still made it out. Um, and it's like, oh, wow, it's so sad to kind of ironic to have that happen with the idea of what we know from the story. Then finally, the last song, technically, is Kansas, and I don't really entirely know what it's about, but the production's really good. The, thanks to um, Taste, Big Taste, this production is really fun and lightly different than the other stuff. Um, and of course, it goes into Moral Story with Niles Horan, which I think it's the same thing, just with him in it. But I think he, I think, I'm sure she did that for the fans. But yeah, this album is so amazing. I'm so impressed by it. I completely get it a 10 out of 10. Um, leave a comment below so what you thought. Let me know what you thought about this. Um, and also, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe button, and the notification bell, too, so you can get more of my videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.